So I'm just excited and encouraged about what is coming, and God spoke to me about a month and a half ago to end this season that we're in with a series on faith, and not just ordinary faith, but we're going to speak today about faith that is right now, faith that is right now, right now faith, and that's the, that's the title of today's message is just that, right now faith. Faith, And I want to encourage you before we jump into the word, I just want to pray a word over your life and into your life. Let's just pray right now. Father, we thank you for today. Today is the day that you have made. We choose right now to have faith, to believe that this is the best day that we have yet to see, God. We declare it. We receive it, Lord. I pray right now that you would give us all eyes to see and ears to hear. Stir us today. Blow, Holy Spirit, upon that ember. Bring it into a raging flame today. Lord, I just pray and speak faith to arise on the inside of each and every single one. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to jump right into it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now. Everybody say now. Now. Right now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. All of that is powerful. What I want to do today is take just those first three words and really dive into them. Now faith is. It doesn't say a minute ago faith was or tomorrow faith will be or next week faith may be. It says now, right now faith is is. That's the difference. That's what separates faith from everything else. If you are believing for something to happen in the future, if you are hoping, right, you are hoping that one day you're going to be healed. You're hoping that one day you're going to get that breakthrough in your workplace. You're hoping that one day that your marriage is going to be restored or healed. You're hoping that one day this or that is going to take place. Then what you are really just doing is you're just hoping. And hope is powerful. Hope is a gift from God. It is an eternal gift, one of the three faith, hope, and love that we carry on into heaven. But I have news for you today that if you're just hoping for something to happen, there is a chance that it may never happen. Hope is all about the future. Hope is the anchor for your soul to hold you steady until something does happen. What separates faith from hope is faith is right Now, I don't hope one day I'll receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I have to believe right now that Jesus already sent the Holy Spirit into this earth, and I can receive him right now. I don't have to have hope for a healing in my body because Jesus already paid the price on the cross of Calvary. In Isaiah chapter 53, it says, by his stripes, we are healed. So faith is activating our belief system. Faith is activating the gift within us to not believe for something in the future, to not stand around and wait for and hope for and and would have, could have, should have, but it didn't happen yet, but it's going to happen one day. That's not faith. Faith is right now in the moment. Faith is living in the very moment that you're in and believing God for his promises to be yes and amen. Because there is nothing yet under the sun that God hasn't already devised an answer for us. Healing, it's already here. Are you hearing me? Joy, it's already here. Love, it's already here. Forgiveness, it's already here. It's here, it's everywhere around us because the Holy Spirit possesses all these things and Jesus paid for it all to be done. What am I telling you today? I'm telling you that if you are stuck in a rut, if you are stuck in a place, then you need faith, not hope that it's going to end, but you need faith to be activated in your right now moment that you will see the breakthrough immediately and not something you just have to sit around and hope for or wait for or wonder about. And the devil, he's at work overtime trying to promote fear, trying to intimidate you, bring stress and anxiety into your life. He's trying to sow seeds of doubt 
And when he sows those seeds of doubt, he waters them with fear and with worry and with stress and with anxiety and intimidation. He waters them, and he hopes that they will grow into a force to where you won't be able to see clearly anymore. And why is that important? Because faith works like this. You must first see it. Not naturally, it says it's the substance of things hoped for. What does that mean? It tells us right there that it is substance. It is tangible, not just hoping for something in the future, but it's bringing it into reality. It is the evidence of things not seen by the natural eye, but seen by the spiritual eyes. So hear this and hear this clearly. The Holy Spirit. He is stoking a fire within you for you to rise up and be the faith-filled believer that God has called you to be. Jesus said we walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. He's talking about physical sight. What we have to do is see it first spiritually. And we see it through the Word of God, both the spoken and the written Word of God. We see what God has already done for us. We see what is out there for us to be able to receive immediately. We see it. And then you have to say it. And when you say it, when you speak it forth, the power of life and death lies in your tongue. So when you speak it forth, you give it life. And then you have to seize it. And what that means is you got to grab a hold of it. you got to take action. You can't just sit back and wait. can't just see it, say it, and then hope it's going to happen. you got to see it, say it, and then go after it like it's already happened. And then when you see it manifested in your life, you must share it with others. And that is the cycle of faith. That's how God continues to build your faith. And that's how you continue to be an example of faith to others. So you must see it, you must say it, share it, and seize it, and then share it. And when you do that cycle of faith, then that continues. It's like it's like the Lion King, right? The circle of life. We're talking about the circle of faith, right? Ha, ah, Semenya, right? So you got to just get after it and believe now. Believe right now, whatever you're going through, if you lost your job during this crisis, believe right now that God has got something better for you that's already manifesting. If you got sick during this crisis, believe right now that God is your healer and by his stripes you're already healed. If you've allowed the enemy to creep in with fear and with doubt, then you need to bind him and declare that in the name of Jesus you lose faith and you believe right now that there's a hedge of protection around you that no harm shall come to you because you are blessed. You are favored. That God is covering you with protection and peace and provision. Are you with me today? So faith is right now. I can't sit around and think about it and hope for it and wonder and and, and kind of desperately ask if it's going to happen. Those things are different than faith. Faith is moving into right now. Let me show you a couple examples, okay? I want to show you the first example, and I want to set up the story first. The story goes like this. The disciples that are with Jesus, his 12, they've watched him up to the point you're about to see. They've watched him raise the dead, literally. They watched him raise the widow's son. They watched him cast out multiple demons. They've watched him heal the sick without even being present. They watched him with the Roman officer who came and said, you don't need to come to my home. All you need to do is speak the word. We're going to talk about that secondly. And Jesus said, your faith is so great, I've never seen any faith like it. Right? And your servant is healed. So hear what I'm telling you. They've seen all of these things happen. And then they get on a boat with Jesus. And they're out in the middle of the water, and a storm comes. And all of a sudden, everything starts to rock. Everything starts to tip. Water splashing in the boat. It's a pretty bad storm. It's probably likened to something like a tropical storm or a hurricane category one type of storm. It's a pretty severe storm. And they all, instead of having right now faith to understand that they just saw God working miracles after miracles after miracles, they got fear. They got doubt. They got intimidated. And then they started to, to freak out. And they go and they wake Jesus up. Luke 20, at verse 8, chapter 8, verses 24 through 25. The disciples, they went and they woke up Jesus. First of all, Jesus was just sleeping in the boat. During the storm, he was sleeping. That's faith. Because he knew it ain't my time yet. And they woke him up shouting, screaming. 
Master, Master, we're all going to drown. This sucker is going down. And when Jesus woke up, you got to see him. He's kind of probably knocking his sleep out of his eye for a second. He looks around, and look what he says. He rebuked the wind and the raging waves. And suddenly, the storm stopped, and all was calm. But then he turned and he asked them. And he didn't ask them in a condescending manner, where is your faith? He asked them, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Have you not seen what you have, what God has done through me? Have you not heard what God wants to do through you? Have you not believed all that God has already done? Where is your faith? Where have you been placing your faith at? Where have you been storing your faith? Where have you been, where have you been spending your faith on? What have you been storing? Spending your faith on. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Jesus is speaking to me saying, man, guys, come on. I've raised the dead. I've cast out demons. I've healed the sick. Where is your faith? You've saw me turn water into wine. Where is your faith? Where is it at? Where did it go? Have you not got it yet? If you got it, how did you lose it? What have you done with it? Where is your faith. And here was the difference just earlier. We'll look at it in Matthew. When that Roman officer came to Jesus and said, my servant is sick. And Jesus said, I'll come and I'll heal. And he said, you don't even have to come into my home. All you're going to do is speak your word. Just speak the word and he will be healed. When Jesus heard this, look at this. He was amazed. How do you amaze an amazing God? How can you possibly amaze an amazing God? The way that you can amaze an amazing God is by having right now faith. That's what this Roman soldier had. He had faith to believe in the now. You don't even have to come. You just got to speak the word right now, right at this moment, because I believe in who you are. I believe in what you say, and all you got to do is speak the word, and I know my servant will be healed. Jesus turned to those who were following him, and he said, I tell you the truth, I've never seen faith like this in all of Israel. This right now crazy, radical faith that doesn't even require me to show up. It just requires me to speak the word. Are you listening now? What was the problem with the disciples in the boat? Here was the problem. They got too used to seeing the miracle instead of being the miracle. God doesn't want you just to see miracles. God wants you to be the miracle. God wants the miracles to be working through you to where people can look at your life and they can know that person is a miracle. Man, that girl is a walking miracle. That guy is a mover in miracles that they are a miracle of God. We cannot just be satisfied with seeing the miracle. We must thirst and hunger to be the miracle of God. That is right now faith. That is the kind of faith that this Roman soldier had. So I want to show you today three keys to having right now faith. Three keys to having right now faith. Are you all ready for them? Here we go. We're going to jump right into it. Number one. Keep it simple. Don't complicate the gospel. Don't complicate faith. Don't complicate Jesus. Mark chapter 5, verse 36, but Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just have faith. You know what he's talking to? While Jairus was standing in line to speak to Jesus because he needed a miracle because his daughter was very sick, he just watched Jesus heal the woman with the issue of blood. And while he is standing there waiting on Jesus, his servants come to him and say, it's too late. Your daughter's dead. She already died. And this is Jesus' response. This is is the Son of God's response. Not, oh, I'm sorry for your loss. Oh, I, I, my heart breaks for you, Jairus. Uh, we'll pray for you to have another child. No, he says, no, just have faith. Just keep it that simple, family. In the face of any crisis, just have faith. In the face of your greatest giant, just have faith. In your face of the threats of any loss, 
Just have faith. Just have faith. Just keep it simple because Jesus would go on and raise this young girl from the dead. That's the story I was referring to of one of the ones that he's already raised from the dead that his disciples already saw with their own eyes. Are you listening to what I'm telling you today? Just have faith. Keep it simple. Don't complicate. Well, if it be thy will, Lord. Well, we must know the will of God to be able to operate in right now faith. And the will of God is that all would be saved and all would be healed. So if you're just hoping for somebody in your family to be saved, you got to turn that hope and replace it. Take hope out and put faith in. Have right now faith. Because faith is the miracle worker. Faith is the one that could change everything in a moment, it is the basis and the foundation for everything that we have and everything that we know. Number two, faith is conditional. This is a mindset that you must get in immediately. Faith is conditional, but guaranteed. In other words, faith comes with a condition. But when you have met that condition, then it's guaranteed. In Matthew 21, verses 22, Jesus said, you could pray for anything and Everybody say it, if that's the condition. Here it comes. If you have faith, there's the condition. You will. Everybody say will. That's the guarantee. It's a promise from God. Anytime God tells us you will, it's a promise from him. You will receive it. You can pray for anything if you have faith. You will receive it. Come on, that's so good. God is wanting to know, yes, there is a condition to this, but there is a guarantee that follows that condition. And there's a condition to having faith. Jesus said you could move mountains with this, 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 the faith as small as a mustard seed. If, condition, you have no doubt. So in other words, if you have a little bit of doubt, you're probably going to need bigger than a mustard seed size of faith. You might need a boulder size of faith if you got a if you got a rock size of doubt. So it's really about how much doubt are you letting in and how much faith are you receiving and increasing because we're going to learn about it. Next week we're going to talk about the measure of faith and we're going to see that we have measures of faith. Some have no faith, some have small faith, some have great faith. We see this all the way throughout the scripture, but we also see in the scripture that we have the ability to increase our faith. We have the ability to grow our faith. We have the ability to receive more faith. So we want to learn that next week. But let's go on to number three. Place your faith correctly. Third key to right now faith, make sure your faith is placed in the right place, not the wrong place. Don't put your faith in man. Hear me and hear me clearly. I love you. I will give my life for you, and I mean that. But don't place your faith in me. I am a man. Don't place your faith in yourself. You are a human being. We are all fallible. And when we place ourselves in other place our faith in other people, we find ourselves usually let down. And then we feel hurt, and then we feel disconnected, and then at times we begin to wonder or doubt God because of the person that we saw that we put our faith in didn't live up to the great the great standard that we had in our minds for them to live up. You can't place your faith in a person. You can't place your faith in your circumstances. Hear this and hear this clearly. You can't, if everything's going great right now for you, can't place your faith in that. If everything's going rough, can't place your faith in that. If you just heard that you're about to win the lottery, you can't place your faith in that. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? You cannot place your faith in anything that is temporal. Look at Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, have faith in God. And that's what I want to close out with today. Have faith in God. Don't have faith in man. Don't have faith in circumstances. Don't have faith in situations. Have faith in in God. Why? Because God is everlasting. God is ever knowing. God is ever present. God is everything that we need. Have faith 
in God. Don't have faith in man. Don't have faith in circumstances. Don't have faith in your money. Don't have faith in your workplace. Don't have faith in your family. It doesn't mean that you can't believe with them. You can't love with them. You can't share faith with them. But you cannot place your faith within them. You must have your faith based and based only in God and God himself. He is the source and the giver of faith. So it works like this. We're coming back to the circle of faith. Everybody say, awesome, and yeah, right? So here it comes. God, the Bible tells us, gives each and every person a measure of faith. So God has given you the gift of faith. So the source of faith gave you faith. If you take that, that gift that was given by the source and place it in something other than back in the source, then you've broken the circle. And you're wondering why it's so tough to get by. How come you haven't seen the breakthrough? Where's the miracle been? It's because your faith is placed in the wrong position. What you got to do is you got to position your faith and your faith alone in one and one alone and his name is Jehovah. He is the God of the heavens and the earth. He is the creator of everything we know and we see. He is the giver of life. He is the breather of breath upon humanity that brought that life into him. God and God alone is where our faith must be. I hope you're receiving this today. I want you to be stirred today. I want you to be encouraged. I pray that the Holy Spirit would come into your life right now and that he would lift up your brow, that he would encourage you, that he would build you up, that I pray right now for a release of the gift of faith like never before. I pray today that doubt is out and faith is in and that as that faith grows, you continue to place it in the source of your faith and that is God in God alone. When you place your faith in God, you cannot fail. You will not fail because God, he is not a failure. God, it is impossible for him to break his word. It is impossible for him to not show up with his promise. And when we place our faith in God, we have placed it in the right area. We have placed it, we have made the right deposit. Are you all with me? Can we give just Jesus just one big, quick thank you for his word, the simplicity of it. And I want to encourage you, as each and every one of you right now, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, hear me and hear me clearly. Today, I believe, if you'll be open, if you'll just say, yes, God, I don't understand it, I don't, I don't get it all. I, it's, it's beyond me. That's good. It's beyond me. The things I'm preaching to you today are not things that I believe because of my mindset. They're things that I believe because my heart is with God. And I've surrendered my mind, my will, my emotion, my body, my spirit. I've surrendered it to God. And I want God to move in my life, in your life, like never before. And the way that we could do that is with right now faith. So I'm believing for you today. I'm praying for you today that you'll be stirred like never before. That which can be shaken will be shaken. Let the loose doubt fall off the tree. Let the anxiety fall off the tree. Those things can be shaken. Let the fear fall off of it. Let it all, let it just continue to be shaken. So we're the only thing that remains is that which cannot be shaken. And faith, it cannot be shaken. And God has given you faith. You can grow it. We're going to learn next week. You can grow it. You can expand it. You can increase it. You can increase that measure but you've already got at least some. Let's start right there. I'm just asking for this for a moment. If we can close our eyes wherever we're at, whatever you're doing, you might still be laying in a bed. You might be sitting on the couch. Maybe you're on your office chair in front of a computer. Wherever you're at. Right now, I just want you just to pause. And everybody, let's just do it together. Even if you know where this is going, just pause. And just meditate for a moment on God. Allow God to begin to speak into your life. He is here. He is right there. Wherever you're at, He is there. He was already there waiting on you. And right now, I know you could feel the presence of God. And He is knocking at the door of your heart. Revelation chapter 3 says, Jesus stands at the door of your heart and He knocks. And if you just open that door, He'll come into you. He'll live in you. He'll forgive you. 
He'll give you a fresh start. And when I mean forgive, he wipes out every mistake you've ever made, every sin you've ever committed. It's gone forever. He wipes it out like it never existed. This is who God is. This is what God wants. He wants a relationship with you. He's not asking for 15,000 different things to do right and make sure you don't do the one million things wrong. What he's asking for you is to trust him and to let him come into relationship with you. It's why he created you, is to have relationship with you. And salvation, the Bible tells us, it begins with faith. That we are saved by grace, by the grace of God. Unmerited favor that we don't deserve, but it is faith, and we are saved by grace through faith. In other words, grace must travel through faith, that you must have first have faith to believe. And I know you've got at least a measure of it. What you've got to do is just let all the confusion, all, all, all the different distractions, just let them, let them fade away now and hone your focus in on Jesus. If you want to say yes today to Jesus and experience something like you've never experienced before where your heart is renewed, where your life is made new, where you're given a fresh start, a new beginning, a clean slate, that I'm speaking to you. Maybe you're here today and you've prayed a prayer like this, but your life hasn't really been reflecting the decisions that you've made, then right now is the moment for you to recommit that time, recommit that moment, recommit that decision to God. And say, God, I can't get back what I've lost, but you can give me more than I could have ever imagined. So I want to pray a prayer with you right now, wherever you're at. If you want to say yes or recommit that yes to Jesus, on the count of three, I want you just to slip your hand up right where you're at. I know some of you may be around family. You may be alone right now. Maybe even around friends. Don't worry about them. Let's take care of you right now. If you want to say yes or recommit that yes on the count of three, I want you to put that hand up nice and high in the air. One, without fear, without worry, without delay. Do it. Two, three. Come on, put that hand up nice and high. If you just put that hand up, just keep it up just for a moment. Some of you are just, you're debating. This feels a little weird. I don't know if I should do it. Just do it. Who cares? Just do it. Just put that hand up. If you just raise that hand, place it right on your heart. That's where Jesus is about to come into. We're going to pray this prayer together. I want everybody that's joining, let's all pray. Just say, Jesus, I believe in you. You are the Son of God. You gave your life for me. Now I give my life to you. Forgive me for every sin, every mistake I've ever made. Give me a fresh start, a new beginning. From this day forward, I dedicate my life to you. Help me, send to me your Holy Spirit to live in me, to guide me every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.